All right, here we go. Uh, buenos dias. All right. So uh, one of the things I like to do, you know, when I'm, I, I get up in the morning, I drink, I get my coffee going, I read a little bit, and then I, I start looking on YouTube to see what people are saying. And one of the things that's uh, of an in interest to me is uh, Revelation 20. You know, I think I've talked to you about this before where, uh, you know, to me the end times or the end of this world and the new world to come is of great interest to me, right? And yeah, because it, to me it's it's so important. Because if you go to Hebrews chapter eleven, for example, it it's the very the very first verse it says, "Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen." So faith is. Yeah. The substance of things hoped for. So, what do we put our hope into? And of course, I put my hope into eternal life, and uh, you know that eternal life is yeah. is life with no sin, right? Yep. And so that's yep. I'm looking forward to this world coming to an end, and and then of course the the everlasting world to come. All right, so to me, I mean, it's it seems so simple. It's it's um it's amazing. What I find absolutely fascinating is there are a bunch of people that don't teach this. I don't, and and they teach something else. And what they teach is this idea of dispensationalism. This idea that well, we're going through this one period now, and then there's coming this other period of time, and then a, another period of time. All right, and so yeah, what, I've seen that. you've seen they, that, yeah. They all broke down, and like, yeah. And it's it's but very. But nobody really knows. Well, yeah, we do know. Actually, the Bible tells us. Hey, let yeah. me let me see if I can show it to We're, you. Okay. Well, you can't show me nothing. No, I can't. But maybe I can tell you. Let me, <laughs> <laughs> let me, okay. All right. So, first of all, I I want to show you. Uh, the an air. You won't be able to see it, but I'll describe what I'm looking okay. at. Okay. All right. And so somebody made a a 40 second video 12 hours ago, and it's a little animation where they've got a a, a, a Earth, and it looks like they got a diamond for the location of Jerusalem on the Earth. Okay, and then uh, let me read Revelation 29, or I'm sorry, 20 verse 9 for okay. you. And it says, and they went up on the breadth, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. They went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And it, this is talking about Satan being loosed after the thousand years and he goes out to deceive the nations to gather them together and they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them all right so what this uh, gentleman in this video he's got a picture of the earth and then Jerusalem on the earth and then the yeah. next the next image he's got fire coming down from God out of heaven onto the earth where yeah. where this diamond is that's, uh, the, that's I guess the holy city uh, New yeah. Jerusalem yeah now, okay so the here's the issue all right that holy city as we read here the beloved city it cannot be on the earth he's got an image of fire coming down onto the holy city and i'm saying that yeah. cannot be because no. new, Jer <laughs> new jerusalem that's new that's it it's like not yeah you're right it's new it, new the, the, that's, that should be a clue new. that that should be a clue and then of course yeah. if we read revelation 21 following John says, I, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, 
coming down from God out of heaven. So, uh, yeah. So, it's not on fire. It's not on fire, and it's not. It wasn't on the earth. It didn't. It right. wasn't on the earth, and then went back up into heaven, and then come back down. It was no. In this scenario, when God sends fire down onto the earth, the New Jerusalem or the holy city, however you want to say it, is up. Yeah. It's up in heaven. And if you, <laughs> to me, it's it's wicked. It's evil to say it's on the earth. You're saying that God's going to destroy the holy city of God. That yeah, that ain't right. Not. That ain't right. And they so, must not. They must not have read it the way we did. No, nah, that's uh, they. They don't. And they're trying to. Uh, they're trying to fit the scripture to. To uh, they're trying to make the the scripture fit the Hollywood movie that they watched last night. Right. And that's what I think. All right, because it's not just there in Revelation. It also in Galatians four. It plainly says but Jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all so it says Jerusalem which is above it's not over there in the Middle East it's above right yeah. so that's our yep. that's our our city that's our hope is in that city that's above in heaven you remember John 14 when Jesus says in my father's house are many mansions if it oh, yeah. were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So he's going up into heaven, and he's making this new city for us. And he's going to come yep. back and receive us, lift us up out of this world, deliver us out of this wicked world into a perfect world, eternal life, a new city, and a new body, an incorruptible body, an immortal body. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, this is, in my opinion, not a small thing to teach incorrectly this idea that fire is going to come down from heaven, from, from God, out of heaven, and devour the entire earth. Including, including Jerusalem, the holy city, the beloved city. That ain't right. That ain't right at all. It ain't right at all. And then, of course, one more thing. One more, one last thing. Second Peter chapter three: The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. So when Jesus comes, he'll come as a thief in the night. And then, of course, in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, we read that the sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear Jesus in the clouds. Right. So when he comes, then we're going to be lifted up and then fire is going to come down on the earth. And it says here that the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now, you know, in the days of so Noah, the works. what's it say yeah. again? The works? That means like the... Yep. Are you still there? Hello? Yeah. No, you cut out. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's why. Wi-Fi, not working. That, well, it's that McDonald's Wi-Fi. So yeah, uh, yeah. So okay. yeah, so that's uh, uh, the works are basically our way of life, right? The um, the things that we, the way we operate in this yeah. world, it's not, yeah. it's not right. It's you know we're working for other men is one example there's lots of examples to give but one example is you you know you're busting your butt for some other guy right in yeah. in the life to come hereafter we will enjoy the work of our own hands we won't be working under another guy and another guy won't be working under us we will enjoy the works of our hands of course that's 
from um, Isaiah 65, right? Okay, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So are you are you a good? Did you had a thought there? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Yeah, and so and that's just one example. And of course, another example right. I like to bring up is uh, uh, the one that people don't like, and that's uh, there's not going to be sex in the life to come hereafter. It's going to be much, much better. Uh, where does it say that? Well, okay, I'm glad you asked. That's a great question. So if you go to Genesis chapter 3, and you read okay. about how Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the garden. I'm tree, sorry, they, yeah. ate, they ate from the tree of the knowledge tree of good knowledge. and evil. Yep. And, and then after that, you know, the, the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And unto the woman, he says, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Right? So it's because they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil God put this on woman and put this on us to, to have children and to be fruitful and to multiply. That's part of this world. It was not part of the original world, if you will. Okay. But okay. Now, if you know, uh, if you go to, for example, I got two more examples to give you. So, Jesus is being challenged on the resurrection. And by the Sadducees, and they say, well, what if, um, you know, one brother dies, does the second brother oh, yeah. take the wife, and, and, we'll, and then all the way up to seven brothers? You yeah. know, okay. Yeah. All right, and then so Jesus says, for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So... To understand this correctly, people won't be getting married. And then to give in marriage is to give your daughter in marriage. That's what that means. I'm not, um, I'm not sure if everybody knows that or not, but that's what it means. And then so because they're not marrying, that means they're not having babies. They're not having kinky, uh, stinky sex, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> and, then, and then one more. I got one more for you in First John chapter 2. It, it, let me read here. For all that is in the world, I'm sorry, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, sex is great, right? But I think sex is overrated, quite frankly. And it gets messy. Yeah. <laughs> it really does. It corrupts, no. it corrupts relationships. That's just, that's just of this earth. It is. It's part of this world. Just like sorrow, sadness, pain, death sex it's all part of this world yeah and i want to no more of that yeah no more of that we got you know we got pleasures it's pleasures of the flesh we have pleasures in this world but i'm putting my hope into a, something much better than stinky kinky yeah. sex okay yeah <laughs> all right so and i know i know a lot of people don't like that why i'm here i'm gonna go ahead and have some of that kinky, oh, stinky well sex. okay okay all right <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> no, I understand totally. I get it. I mean, that's. Yeah, that's all. I'm just cho being a joker. I know. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know. So, anyways, um, that was a great question. I'm glad you asked. Uh, yeah, I don't. I didn't really read it like that. Yeah. But yeah, well, that does make sense. I mean, but the way I figured there's no, is. There's no more going to the doctor. There's no more. Uh, funerals, no more right, sex. Right. Got you. Right, right. There's no more, vet, uh, what do you call that, VD? Yeah, yeah. no more STDs. Right, STDs, yes. No, you don't have to worry about that no more. 
So, oh. <laughs> so it, 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 yeah, and so it's interesting to me because I've not heard, I don't think I've ever heard a preacher preach on that. And, no. and imagine uh, how many people he would lose if he did stand in front of the congregation and say, "Well, this, there's no more sex, kids. You get, you yeah. get half, you lose half your congregation." Probably some people put that ahead of God. So exactly, exactly. In fact, right. if we most go, people, if we go back to Second Peter chapter three, where I, you know, where I read that the day of the yeah. Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heaven shall pass yeah. away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. If we scroll up to verse three, Second Peter chapter three, it says, "Knowing this." first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust yeah wow so these guys the bunch of scoffers pretending pretending to be uh christians who are walking after their own lust yeah their own sexual sensual desires and we also read that in in uh jude as well i'm not sure it might as well since i brought it up i might as well point it out to you in jude 18 <clears throat> and of course there's only one chapter of jude in verse 18 it says how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust these be they who separate themselves sensual having not the spirit and then of course in, of course in what i always like to bring up is in matthew 24 mark 13 and luke 21 when the disciples came to jesus privately and asked him what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and the very first thing that jesus says is take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying that i jesus am Christ and shall deceive many so right there he's telling us a lot of people are going to say they believe in Jesus but they're going to yeah. be deceivers and it's going to get worse and worse and worse as we get toward the end of the world so much so that we also read in Matthew 24 for example it says except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. Isn't that interesting? If God let things play out the way they are, there would come a point to where there would be no flesh saved. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so for me, that's interesting. So that's why a little bit, well, I, if you notice, I'm a little bit skepti uh, skeptical of people, of preachers, and what they're teaching. Yeah. And this is why, because I, I'm, I'm concerned about what I'm seeing and of course, uh, the, to have support in the Bible, it, let me uh, let me show you a verse here. It says, "Try the spirits." Uh, here in First John chapter four, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Yeah. So that's that's the approach that I take, and of course. And another verse is, prove all things and hold fast to that which is true. So unless you can prove it, <laughs> you know, and then, of course, you can use the Bible as absolute proof. Yeah. All right, so anyways, I just want to share that with you. How you been? You you have any uh, anything, any questions that, that you've been reading lately or anything? Uh, well, any? I got into a part, uh, I can't tell you where it was at. Um, what's it? Give me I don't some, know. Give me some. Gene clues. got into conversation with me about giants back in the day. Okay, like they're giants. Yeah, he said that was from angels having sex with. There we go. God's daughters. Yep. God's children. Did yep. you know about that? Oh, I know all about that, and that's that, <laughs> that's not right. That, that's my thought. He, now, when he said giants. You got it. Okay, that's fine. I'll go along with that. But when you say angels, yeah. no. no. Now, again, I'll tell you, Brett, that 
about 99% of all the preachers preach this idea that angels had sex in the days of Noah. Okay? Yeah. Where's that's where's that at though? It, like, it's not in it's Genesis? Like, I can't what? It's not in Genesis, is it? No, it's not anywhere in the Bible at all. <laughs> but people, yeah, that's, what, that's people, what I thought. People preach it. It's unbelievable. It's a, an, another example. Remember what I was showing you about scoffers and mockers in yeah. the last days yeah. of walking? Here we got another doctrine based on sex. And yeah. the interesting thing is it's not in the Bible anywhere. So in Genesis 6 is where they get it from. And what they do yeah. is they take the English word giants yeah. and then they go and, tr and they translate that into a foreign language and then retranslate that back into English and then make it out to be something that it's not. And huh. so we got Nephilim is what they call. That's a buzzword, yeah, yeah. is red flag. Nephilim is not in the Bible at all. Huh. All right, so. So that's a word that they translated and translated back? Yeah, it's a, it's a trick. It's a trick. Okay. It's a dirty trick. And uh, it, what, it, what it does is it tells me that they don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. All right, so follow me on this. Follow me. That, so the idea that Gene yeah. is presenting to you is that the sons of God are angels? Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, let's follow me on this. Sons of God would be sons of God. It's not complicated, is it? No. Okay, so but follow me on Gene's logic here, and 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 he look he I get it. There, he's got millions of people that believe the same way he does. Yeah, I get it. But I don't believe what men say. I believe what God says. And so yeah. follow me on this. The sons of God. Okay, if they're angels, well, let me go to First John. Hold on, let me find it. I don't want to butcher the verse. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Let me find it exactly. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. All right, so I'm a son of God. And yeah. believe me, I'm no angel. Right, right. So, I hear you. <laughs> there's... I'm not an angel. I guarantee it. Now, no. you're going to say, but they're not just saying that these are angels. That's not what they're saying at all. They're saying that no. these sons of God are fallen angels. You've heard that? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, oh, yeah, fallen angels, yeah. Right. So I'm a son of God, so you're calling me a, a fallen angel. You're saying that I'm evil. All right. And what is that verse in is Isaiah? Woe unto them that make bitter for sweet, oh, good for evil. What is that? Doggone it. Not sure. Um, hold on a second. I'll find it here in a second. Woe unto them. It's Isaiah chapter 5. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So this is exactly what they're doing when they say the sons of God, which is good, are not sons of God, but rather fallen angels, which are bad. Right. It, I mean, it's insane. It's insanity. Now, if you actually read Genesis 6, um, now you can't see my screen, but I got a highlight. I got a right. I got the Bible right here. Okay, all right. So I'm, I want to highlight every time we read. I'm going to read a little bit here for you, and I'm I've got highlighted men and daughters of men, sons of God, man, and we're going to fight. And you'll notice when you read it, it's not talking about angels, uh, God destroying the world because of angels. It's God's destroying the world because of man, and it's it's beyond obvious. It's crystal clear. Yeah. All right, so when it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, that should have been your first clue when it said men, okay, began to multiply yeah. on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, in reference to the men, 
that, that began to multiply, the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Now that's interesting, because it doesn't say the son of God, uh, a son of God took one wife. It's it's telling us the that they took, God. yeah, they took, it says they took wives. In other words, they had many wives. Yeah. You know, like, like uh, Gene, he's got one wife. Well, back in the yeah. old days, they had, oh, men yeah. had several wives. Yeah. Oh, and that must have been, huh? So in, in chapter four of that verse, it says, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they were they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. That's the giants. The, yeah. The, so your your G- yeah. your corrupt Bible says Nephilim instead of giants. It does. It said what? It, it, it says Nephilim instead of yeah, giants. It does. Yeah. Yeah. And I call it your corrupt Bible. <laughs> okay. So. It, it, so it, according the logic to the translators of the Bible version that you got, yeah. giants is too hard. It's too hard to understand. Right. So they have to use a word that nobody understands. <laughs> uh, right. I mean, you've probably heard people say, oh, the King James is too hard to understand. Well, yeah, I kind of say that. Well, here we got an example of giants. I know what a giant is. I mean, what the hell is a Nephilim? I don't know. <laughs> I don't either. I know what a giant is. It's a yeah. It's a tall person, right? Okay. People yeah. in the yeah. M- people in the NBA are giants to me. You know, yeah. my my son is he's six foot five. When I stand yeah. up to him, he's intimidating. Giant. He is. Giant. A, he is a giant. And, but there are men a lot taller than he is. Yeah. And so. We also, a further study in this particular uh, word giants, we see that, uh, like, uh, for example, Goliath was six cubits in a span, and a cubit is about a foot and a half. It's from elbow to fingertip, about a foot and a half. So six cubits is about nine feet in a span. I would say that's about ten feet tall. That's that's insane. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. Somebody that's seven foot tall is crazy tall. Eight foot yeah. tall is unimaginable. Ten, foot? Ten foot's yeah. out of this world. Well, they also lived 150 years. In the in the days, in the, yeah, they lived 900 years. They lived. Uh, what? Yeah. How old was Moses when he climbed the mountain? No, well, it after after the flood, they they lived. Uh, yeah, I think Moses was 120. <laughs> But yeah, I'm but climbing the mountain. right. But before the flood, men lived uh, nine hundred and some years. Look, Adam lived nine hundred thirty years. Noah lived uh, nine hundred thirty years, I think. So wow. I mean, they lived a long time before the flood. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, people have asked me, uh, well, how did they become giants? And, and that's a great question, I think. Uh, and then uh, apparently the explanation that the deceivers will give is, well, they had sex with angels and they magically poofed up to these giant, uh, you know, 300 foot tall beings. Well, it's, it's, that's not the case at all. If you know anything about horse breeding or dog breeding, you know that if... I know a good joke. Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> well, when I was in jail, they said, what they get you for? I said, well, they got me a... a okay, they got me for attempted barnyard sodomy, but I might get it dropped down to horseplay. <laughs> that's, <laughs> okay. That's silly. All okay. Right. All right. Well, I like it. I like it. So, so uh, All right. Uh, so basically, I mean, if you have, uh, you know, like uh, your, your teenager's tall, and then some, your neighbor's um, teenage daughter, she's tall, and well, you breed them together, you know what's going to happen? They're going to have tall children. Tall people. Yeah. Yeah. Genetics. Yeah. Genetics. It's age old. It's not a new thing. They've been. Do, they do that with dogs. They do that with horses. Horses. Yeah. They do it with cows. Everybody does it that has animals. It's not a. 
it's not a unique thing. No. And no. so they were doing that back in the days, and that's why they were able to get these extremely tall uh, people. And then, of course, those tall people were cut down. But yeah. that's another story. Uh, so that I mean, that's it's it's I mean, that's that, to me that's so simple and easy. This idea that these invisible beings, yeah, they came and had sex, and all of a sudden the babies poofed up to be extremely. Yeah. That's not that's not the way I read it. But tell me how you read it. Well, I mean, I read it that the son of God, which is all of us, right? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. In the and, go they ahead. had sex with women, daughters, and I don't think they're giants. No, I guess I don't know. I don't know. Well, it, you notice here, it does say. Uh, it doesn't say anything about angels, does it? No, that, it can't find that word that's at all. I, that's my point. I was trying to make right. And the giants that we read about are part of the sons of God. It's not a separation. It's the giants are part of the sons of God. I got you. Yeah, so <clears throat> it doesn't mean that they are all giants. It doesn't even mean that God destroyed the world because of giants. All it is making a, is giving us a scenario of what the world was like back then when these giants basically uh, had power great power in the earth and they had lots of children and they became mighty men which are of old men of renown they were famous all right the great big giant people were famous all right so yeah. that's all that means now okay um so i've had people ask me well if they were sons of god back then what's the difference now Right. And, what is the difference? Well, yeah, what is it? Yeah, it's a great question. So, first of all, we got to establish that, you know, for example, we read in Luke, let me find a verse before I butcher it. In Luke chapter 3, it tells us that Adam was the son of God. Right? Well, yeah, Jesus yeah. is the son of God. Well, what's the difference? Well, so, as in Adam, all die, even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. Adam was born of the flesh, and then, of course, because of Jesus Christ, we are born of the Spirit. So now, those of us that are born of the Spirit are sons of God. So, let me see if I can go back and to Genesis, where it says, in, here, in Genesis 6, where it says, when it, Excuse me. When it talks about the sons of God, it's talking about all the men. All right. Now, oh, you know what I was going to do this morning, uh, and I didn't do. I wanted to find the exact verse, the exact verse, or the very first verse. I can find it in many verses, but uh, I wanted to find the very first verse when the Lord uh, made His promises to Abraham and says. That ye shall be unto me, my people, and I shall be their God. And <clears throat> I can't remember. I'm butchering the verse. So, so basically, uh, let me try to make this real simple. So, uh, Abraham, what he was going to offer his son as yeah. the sacrifice, yep. and the angel stopped him and said no. Yeah. And but God promised Abraham. Um, basically the kingdom of God and so now Abraham and his seed were the promises made all right so now the people of God are in Abraham and his seed all right so that's when the that's when the <clears throat> how do I put it that's when God started to define who his people are. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, okay, because outside of Abraham and his seed, they were not the people of God. The people of God were Abraham and his seed. If we go to, like, the, for example, Exodus chapter 3, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. So his people were the Hebrew people, in 
Egypt during that time. Therefore, yeah. those that were not his people were not the sons of God. Okay. That does that make does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. It's like it all goes back to uh, Adam and Eve. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. So and so here here this is an example of God is more uh, defining who is He's creating that separation between His people and the people of the serpent. Just like right. just like Genesis three verse fifteen. When the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity, division, between thy seed and her seed, it shall, I shall, I'm sorry, I butchered that. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Right there is really, I guess you could say that's the very first time that the separation uh, began, but that separation was from... Uh, the, the spirit of God and the spirit of the serpent. And then it started to manifest itself here after the flood with Abraham when the spirit came upon Abraham and the promise was made to him, to Abraham and his seed. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> there's there's really no other way around it. There's no other way around it. Um, because we are... Those of us that are born of God are sons of God, right? Yep. Yep. And uh, there's this verse uh, <clears throat> that I was looking for yesterday. Oh, goodness sakes. I want to share it with you because I want to remember it. Um, Jesus says that we must become as children. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, what? Where is that at, though? Exactly. Oh, there it is. Be converted. That's the word I want to look for. Convert children. So in Matthew chapter eighteen, Jesus says, "Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven." Hey, do me a favor. Share me your your thought on that. Well, it's like when you're a child, you can really have faith. You don't have to see things to believe them. Like Santa Claus. Like the Easter Bunny. You know? Like, your imagination's more open to things, I think. And you want to be like a child for your faith in God. That's well said. Okay. That's well Good. said. Yeah. That's uh, the way I read it. Yeah. I mean, you remember being a child? That was, that was great, uh, wasn't it? And we had, me and you had a lot of fun as children. Oh, yeah. We had imaginations. We had faith and we believed. Yeah. And And uh, that's, before you get all brought down by this world, you know? Exactly. That's why God always, that's why Jesus always taught to the children. That's why he always had the children around, too. Yeah. 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 So that's why we need to be like children for belief in God. Yeah, not grumpy old man like we are no. now. No, well, like Gene. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I get. Oh. No, I. Yeah, this is a work in progress. Uh, right. right. Well, we we are all. We all are. Yep. Yeah. Um, but no, that's uh, uh, that's exactly right. Because when we were children, we were fun. We were free. We were happy, and we. That's what we want now, isn't it? We want. We want to go back to that time when we had that freedom and had that joy. And God has promised us that there's coming a time when we will be free and have that joy that we had when we were children. Um, You know, Jesus says, if the Son of Man shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. So, man. We were we don't have really we don't have freedom. No matter how much we are in the spirit of God, we don't have freedom now because we're constricted by this this body that we're in. And we always have stress of life that's gonna come in, you know? There's always some kind of new stress thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard for us to just totally let go of that and understand that God's gonna take care of us. It is. You know? I mean even like I, I feel like more of a child now that I'm I've got God in my life, like, 
I look at each day like a blessing and an adventure. Like it's hard. It, it does everything else does drag you down a little bit though. Oh, yeah. The world's you always know? trying to drag me down. Oh yeah, I got my own stressors right now. I got I got a lot of stuff I got to do in these next couple of days. Yeah. Uh, I gotta go to a mental evaluation here in about forty say, minutes. Say again. I gotta go to a mental health evaluation. Are you kidding me? It's for my son. I gotta go oh. jump through all their. It, it, yeah, it's I, not I, DHS. I go I'm not crazy. Oh. Well, you gotta That's go not. convince crazy people that you're not crazy. <laughs> okay. Well, I know I'm not. I know I'm not. So we're good. Do you know they're not? Well, no, but that's not my problem. Well, no, I guess not. They're in control and you're not, so you will do what they say. Yeah, I have to. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. But hey, don't yeah. get me started on that stuff, man. I know. I'm not. I'm not. Those people are nuts. Just do what you got. I know. I don't get it. So. But I got I to gotta jump in the shower and stuff. Okay. So. Should I let you go now? Is that all right, Jimmy? Yeah, you bet. It was fun talking to you. You too, buddy. Good, yeah. good, good talk. Good talk. All right, enjoy the day, buddy. All right, bud. See ya. Later.